Hey guys, Marmalade here. Thank you so much for joining me on this comprehensive series of videos that I'm putting together to hopefully uh, help you get through Section A more comfortably, confidently, and just really help you get a good start on your through hike attempt of the Pacific Crest Trail. So I decided to make a series of six videos to complete Section A. Uh, I've already put out number one, which is, if you haven't seen it already, is how to get from San Diego to the terminus and what to expect and how to get there in different ways along the way. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put the, the link down in the description box below. So check that out. Uh, videos two, three, four, and five will be getting through section A, which is from the southern terminus on the California-Mexico border up to Warner Springs, which is mile marker 109.5. So what I decided to do is break it, like I said, into four pieces. So I'm gonna do the first of four videos will be from the Southern Terminus to Lake Marina, which is mile marker 20. Video two will be from Lake Marina, mile 20 to Mount Laguna, which is mile marker 43. The next one, which will be our third in the four videos, will be from mile marker 43, which is Mount Laguna, like I said, all the way to Scissors Crossing, which is mile marker 77. And I've chosen to do the final one a little longer, which will be mile marker 77, all the way to Warner Springs, which is mile 109.5. And I'm going to regress a little bit because I assume that people know what mile markers are. But if you're fairly new to hiking and you don't know what this is on the Pacific Crest Trail, as well as other long trails, is, you know, the Pacific Crest Trail is roughly 2,653 miles in its entirety. So when you start at the southern border, you're at mile zero. When you've hiked one mile, you're at mile marker one. When you get to Lake Marina at mile marker 20, that means you, it's just telling you how many miles you've done so far in your hike. So when I refer to mile markers, which a lot of hikers do once you're on trail, that's what it means. I want to make clear too that when you see these videos it's going to be pieced together from a lot of different videos if you didn't watch my through hike go ahead and i recommend you do that anyway i created a video every single day on trail uh if you don't know who i am like i said my trail name is marmalade i attempted my through hike in 2019 i made it a good 900 miles till i actually had the trail avalanche broke my ankle hike over i went back this year or last year i should say in 2020 and uh, did another almost 300 mile section so i did another piece of it but I live in the San Diego area and I, I have been hiking the desert ever since I started uh, one of the first days of 2016. So I know the desert by heart, especially Section A. So I think that I thought of this series because I know it so well and there's a big percentage of people that end up quitting and getting off trail in Section A at the beginning because they're either not prepared or don't know what they're in for. So hopefully these videos will help you. As I was saying in these videos, don't be too surprised if you see different uh, clothing from different years. So. Uh, I have a lot of footage for my 2019 through hike because of all the videos I did. So I'll be using a lot of that, which was basically a year and a half ago now. Uh, I've actually, since I live close, I've been out there and filmed a little bit now. I have stuff from other trips. I've done section A in pieces. I did the whole thing on my through hike attempt, but I've done it in pieces. I've probably completed section A probably six, eight times completely, just doing it over and over in sections. So I know it really well, but you'll see video clips uh, from different years and different clothes and different hair and everything and hats. So don't be too alarmed. That's why you'll see that. You also see a mixture of voiceovers uh, where I'll maybe take the sound out so I can explain uh, with a voiceover what you're seeing. So hopefully I can show you, um, it could be campsites, uh, big climbs, um, you know, water sources, things like that, and just general information about how to get through the trail. So that'll be uh, these videos coming up. There are two, three, four, and five. And on my sixth video, what I want to do is kind of close it all out with um, some stats from the surveys they do. They do surveys of the through hikers every year. And so I want to go over some stats from 2019 and 20. Um, you know, everything from eight percentage of age ranges, like are they older, are they younger, are they in the middle? Uh, what percentage quit and where do they quit and why do they quit? Um, so I want to go over some stuff just to give you, depending on whether you're a little bit older like me or younger on the stats, things like that. And then I want to give you some tips and what I've experienced on how to really be successful because I think the key to these videos and the key to your hike is being as prepared as possible to get a great start because if you don't start well and you know your gear doesn't work and you you didn't you didn't train you didn't do anything you have a much much smaller percentage chance to actually finish so thanks for watching thanks for tuning in let's get started with uh, section a part one which is mile marker zero up to Lake Moreno which is mile marker 20. As we start this series from the Southern Terminus, I thought I'd show you a few pictures from my through hike attempt in 2019. And as you can see, the old fences there, they have a big, giant, fancy new one now. It's funny, but even though I'm a local and I've been here probably eight times before my through hike attempt, I couldn't help wonder what I was gonna experience and see and the people I was gonna meet on the way, and I'm sure you will as well.
as you get to this bridge and potential water source this is at mile marker 2.7 i personally would never drink out of this plus it's very early in the hike to have to filter water and get water it's very stagnant and doesn't really move and doesn't look very appealing one thing you will enjoy is the first three miles of your through hike is very flat if not a little downhill and just kind of rolling all right it's kind of a cool mile marker here you come up to these railroad tracks that aren't being used anymore but check out the sign baby you may have seen it before three miles in it's about an hour and 15 minutes we took some stops and cruised but yeah Please check gut hooks first to see if this water's flowing, but it usually is in spring. If the water is flowing here, there is no need to carry a lot of weight in water to start your hike. There's Linda coming up. Hey, hey, hey. How you feeling? Pretty good. Yeah. A little out of breath. <laughs> She's a strong hiker. Look at that view. Oh, yeah. I did want to mention here at mile marker 11.4, if you don't think you can get to Hauser the first day or you start late, there's a great campsite here at this spot, and then you can get it in the morning. After about a half mile of road walking, you will hit this section you see here, which is about exactly two miles straight down a steep hill down into Hauser Canyon and to where you would camp. Little update, we finally got done with all the uphill and look what's behind me. That's Hauser Canyon. Hauser Creek's down there where we're gonna camp. If I can give you a local tip, just take your time and kind of hunt and peck going down here because it's kind of washed out and there's a lot of loose rocks and just the trail is not very well maintained. It's camp for the night. That's my tent there, the Tiger Wall too. Just heat up some water for my food. What up? Martin's over there, big man, Martin. Lots of duplexes here. There's a man with a big Agnes. He's got taste. All right, this is Hauser Creek. And there's your creek right there. It's dry a lot of the years. Make sure you check gut hooks for current comments on it. Morning, good morning. Hiking with my new friend Martin, say hey. What's up? Day two, 2019 through hike. Uh, we had a good night at Hauser Creek last night. There's water flowing. Forgot to film it, but there's water flowing as of 326, 19. And I had a group, group of people. What do you think, there's 15, 20 people there maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah, at, yeah. Least, at least 10 tens. We're going up the infamous Hauser Creek, Hauser Canyon, I should say. And we're about, I don't know, what do you think, half mile up? Yeah. And here, I'll try to show you guys in the background. That's the mountain we came down yesterday. And uh, that's kind of where we're going up right now. The first 2.7 miles to Lake Moreno is uphill quite a bit, as people know. All right, we're more than halfway up. It's going pretty well. It's nice doing this in the morning when it's cool. Look at that view right there. A little hazy today, but it's keeping the sun off of us. But this is much better doing it in the morning when it's cool and we're fresh. So it's about 1,100 feet of elevation gain from Hauser Creek over 2.7 miles. When you get to the 2.7 miles from there, you will have flat or downhill into Lake Marina. So you just gotta make it 2.7 miles and 1,100 feet. If you need a little place to take a break right after that climb, this is a great spot overlooking the lake and it's right off the edge of the trail. All right, so we made it to Lake Marina. I want to show you the campground down there. Got the first 20 miles of the trail out of the way, baby. So over here, if you look straight ahead there, well, I'll show you when we get there. You can park here and come here for the day if you're local and park your car and there's no fee. 
and I've gone out for two or three days and backpacked and back, my car's fine. The ranger station is nearby, so they drive by. But that's the Lake Moreno campground, and I'll show you later when we go by where the PCT hikers can camp for five dollars a night. Beautiful big oak trees, and that parking lot straight ahead where that orange car is is free. It's weird if you park here, you're supposed to pay two or three dollars, so I'm not sure of the point, but. Anyway, so as we go out to the road here, you see the campground's pretty empty. Yeah. <laughs> Normally it's full of people, but and it's nice too. So we're gonna turn right and where that RV is going, if you guys can see that, we're gonna go a quarter mile to where the deli is. So, and then when we get hiking, we're gonna go that way towards down that road down there, which I'll show you later. It is Oak Shores Fresh Deli and Malt Shop. There it is, folks. The one and only. One of the reasons I'm showing the inside is that many people make the mistake of carrying way too much food when they first start their through hike, especially if you're not experienced with resupply. They have everything you could possibly want here, including uh, fresh food like pizza and burgers. So maybe think about how many days it's gonna take you to get here, carry that amount of food, and then resupply here. It'll save you weight and be much more comfortable when you start your through hike. If you can at all, I suggest you definitely stop here and eat. They have incredible food here and burgers, pizza, things like that. This is the area where you stay at. It's on the northern end of Lake Moreno County Park. It's ginormous. I've been here a bunch, probably 10 times, but uh, probably could fit 150 tents, who knows, but tons of room here. It's $5 a night, you go pay. Oh, they actually have a box, box, box right now. It's brand new, right there. And you put your uh, $5 in and you're good. You can also go up to the ranger station, which is where I'm pointing, way down there, which is what you used to have to do. But anyway, uh, there's a fire pit there, covered gazebo, trash, which is huge. The water's right there past my pack. And uh, we're going to be heading out that way just in a second.